Okay. Okay. So we will just do simple thing like uh, linear. First of all, we stick to linear uh, integral equation because uh, anything nonlinear, even differential equation, any nonlinear differential equation will be uh, uh, difficult. And first of all, and solution will be mostly case by case, just some special cases. There's not a whole lot of general formula for nonlinear equation. And there's some, but not, not a whole lot. But um, so mainly it's just linear equations. So first of all, we restrict that, that, uh, that make it a whole lot simpler because uh, most likely our linear solution will re require numerical solution anyway. Um, so for linear equation, uh, the section one has just uh, two things. One is just some definition, just uh, names, which I mean, not exactly important, but it's important in, in terms of taking an exam because if the question asks you to describe a certain thing and you don't know even the name, then that would be a problem. Right? So other than that, uh, if it's not then closed book exam, it's just not very important. So, uh, so basically we, this is just classification of different kinds of integral equation. So there are two, a, a few uh, descriptions. One is uh, the, whether the integral equation the, the dependent, uh, independent variable applied, uh, appear in the limit or not. So if it's, it doesn't appear in the limit like this equation, the first equation, 21.1. So um, this K I T D T. If it doesn't appear, so the uh, independent variable is X in this case. The function we want to solve is phi. We want to phi, solve phi as a function of X but this appear in the integral, so it's an integral equation, but the X doesn't appear in the limit of the integ integration. So that is called the uh, flat home, okay? So this is, uh, in, let's compare with uh, the other case. If you have, uh, this is 21.3, if you have instead something like A and X, Again, you have a K, and this K is called a kernel, just a, a, another terminology. Okay, if it appears in the limit, it's called uh, Volterra, another string name, but uh, anyway, um, that's just uh, one classification, depends on whether uh, the variable X appear in the limit or not. Okay, so that's just the first thing. Now the second thing is whether it's uh, the, the function that we want to solve appear only inside the integral or it appear inside or outside and outside. So, so this, for this, this two there, the phi only appear inside the integral. So, those are called the first kind. And if it appears also outside, then it's second kind. So this is 21.2 uh, phi x equals to x plus lambda. Okay. Okay, so compare this with that. So it has an extra term here, phi. I mean, f is 
appear in the other side, but that doesn't matter. There's a, that's just a sign difference. And there's a lambda here, which supposedly you can absorb it in K, so that doesn't really matter, except that uh, sometimes you want to get it out explicitly because uh, you want to try to find a solution for some lambda, so lambda becomes like a eigenvalues, or, although it's not uh, in the form of the differential equation eigenvalue problem, but uh, we have some similarity. But when we solve the eigenvalue, we usually ignore this f, so set f to zero, then uh, this becomes a so-called homogeneous. If f is non-zero, this is also called inhomogeneous. So because when you have homogeneous solution, f is zero, then this equation we satisfy for, for a phi that's up to a, just a constant, because if this is zero, if phi is a solution, you can multiply phi by any constant in front and it's still a solution. So in that case, uh, that you might not be able to find a solution unless lambda satisfy a certain value, maybe a set of value as an infinite set of value. And then you solve for phi subject to the discrete value of lambda, so that is a eigenvalue problem. Okay, so, so combining all this description, so this would be a flat home and flat home solution uh, equation of the second kind because you have phi outside also, and it's inhomogeneous because fx is not zero. This set fx to zero becomes a homogeneous uh, equation and uh, that's the eigenvalue, eigenvalue problem, okay? And so the corresponding Volterra equation would be something like that. Again, this is second kind because phi is also outside. And then uh, x k Okay, and I mean, for this equation, the textbook doesn't have a lambda here. It doesn't really matter because um, again, you can combine lambda with k and then get the, define your new k. Okay, so these are just names, All right? And sometimes these things are not exactly, I mean, this, this is just definition, but uh, it's not totally exclusive because you can always change a Volterra, get rid of this by redefining your, your kernel. Like if you combine this kernel with, with a step function, then you can extend this to up to a fixed limit, like set this to infinity. So that is also possible. But uh, uh, that's just how you, you classify solution classify equation so that you, you can find find solution according to different type okay so but that's the that's the definition so it's nothing very special just just so that you know those names okay and now the rest of chapter section one is also um Pretty simple is just to uh, provide some example how you get integral equation. And in this example, you got the integration, integral equation by differential equation. So that is one, one possibility. So first you have a differential equation, then you convert that into a integral equation. Um, but then of course you can you may ask why do you do that? Because that might not seems to have uh, any advantage to do that. It might be advantage, I mean, have some advantage if, if the integral equation you know how to solve or you can solve it numerically. But otherwise uh, this, it might not really have, I mean, any, anything. Uh, you may not actually get anything out of converting it into integral equation. Uh, 
But then uh, some integral equations are not from differential equations. Um, they are kind of intrinsic. When you construct your model, you just get the integral out and there's no uh, differential equation to a corresponding. And you cannot convert that into a differential equation. And that is also possible. Uh, and for some cases, uh, you can convert the integral equation to a differential equation, but not always possible. Okay, so, uh, so the first example is just very simple. It's, it's a Schrodinger equation. And these are just constant. Uh, when you look at it, just mathematically, just a Laplacian with some constant. And then you have this V as a function, which is uh, the potential. Equals the eigenvalue. So, so you want to solve for solve for psi, okay? And for this one, is a uh, homogeneous because psi appear in all, in all terms, and then you have this e um, is basically an eigenvalue, okay? And it's linear, and so uh, it's solvable. I mean, it's a differential equation, and you, most likely you can solve it, try to solve it in a different way. Uh, but uh, in terms of converting it into integral equation, you can do a Fourier transform of the equation. And the idea is that uh, you have two functions, v and psi. So, so the second term be becomes a convolution in the Fourier space and you do a Fourier transform because we talk about that. You transform a convolution, a Fourier transform or a convolution is the part of Fourier transform of the two function. And if you do a Fourier transform of a part of two function, you get the convolution between the Fourier transform, okay? And so that's the general case, but the, the next equation in your textbook is for the, for the special case that the V is just a electric potential, just one of all electric potential. In that case, uh, you know the free transform because one of all free transform, one of all becomes one of all square I mean, with some constant. So you know how to do that. So you convert that uh, for each in free transform to Laplacian. When you take the free transform, you get a k square minus k square cancel with lambda. So you have two h bar square k square for two m. And then you are, the free transform is now called, called uh, phi. Now it depends on k in three dimension, space of three dimension. And then the second term, well, second term is a convolution. And you need to work out the constant, which we did before, so you know how to do that. And you multiply by the Fourier transform of the V and psi, but then it's a convolution. So you like the Fourier transform of one of R is K square. So this becomes K minus K times square and then phi k, k pi, k, k, k pi. And that is uh, in the form of a convolution in three dimension. Okay, and that equals e phi k. Okay, so that becomes an integral equation because phi also appear in, inside the, the integral. And this is uh, over the whole range of space or k space, so this is, in the infinite k space in three dimension, but it's still the inside the integral, and with no uh, variable, the in, the variable of the solution k doesn't appear in the in the uh, limit of the integral. So this is a Fredholm type uh, integral equation, and it's second kind because uh, you have phi outside and inside the integral. Okay, and 
now the question is whether this is easier to solve than this one. And I mean, as at first sight, it's not. So uh, of course, uh, uh, the, it might be easier to solve it by numerically. So, uh, but uh, analytically, it doesn't appear that this is any easier than the, than, than the first one. Okay, so, but. It's just an example that uh, you can actually convert the differential equation to an integral equation. So, uh, but that's the first one. The second one is uh, now this is uh, this, this is three dimension. The second one is even easier. It's, it's just one dimensional ODE. So, uh, so we did that actually two times. One is in the ODE chapter, the other is in the Green function chapter. And in both cases, we have solution written down and uh, the form are very similar, whether you solve it by uh, in the ODE method, the homogeneous, uh, inhomogeneous solution and or the Green function method. The solution are very similar. Actually, you can show that they are equivalent. Now, this is the third time we are going to write it, but uh, we write it in terms of uh, a an e integral equation. Okay, so we just write it down. So, uh, let's just erase it because. Uh, Don't have much space here. So, all right, that's very simple second order ODE. And we know the um, some method to solve it, but there's no general method if uh, the coefficient which is a function X is general. There's actually no general method to solve it. It depends on what the coefficients are. And then this is an inhomogeneous one. So you have, you have a uh, function of X on the right-hand side. So um, in the ODE chapter and green function chapter, we usually assume that uh, we can find like one solution and then uh, find another solution. And we remember we found another solution by the wrong scheme. After we get the first solution, we use the wrong scheme to find the second solution. And then the, the that's those are for homogeneous one. Once you get homogeneous solution, then the inhomogeneous solution is in, in the form of uh, using the homogeneous solution and integrating. Uh, with uh, the source term, the, the term on the right hand side. And likewise, in the green function method, it's, it's like that we use the two inhomogeneous solution to construct a green function. And the green function, you multiply by the source term, you give you the solution for the inhomogeneous solution. So we could do that if we know how to solve the, like first solve the homogeneous uh, solution. Um, otherwise, there's no general method. And now to solve this, this is second order. So we need the either initial condition or boundary condition. And as it turns out, converting it in integral equation depends on the way you set up the boundary condition. If it uh, on is if it's like the initial condition. Uh, that will, will do, uh, you get one kind of uh, integral equation. If it's like boundary condition or two point boundary condition, so you have condition on the two values of x, so x equals to a, x equals to b, you have the solution, uh, the values of y set for uh, the two boundary, then you get another kinds of uh, integral equation. But, uh, um, the, after you convert it to uh, integral equation, the, you actually have the 
uh, boundary condition or initial condition already uh, incorporated in the form of the equation of the integral equation. So we need the equation, the uh, condition. So uh, you have an initial condition y at a and y prime at a. Okay, so that's a, so that is a, a setup of uh, ODE, so that is not that difficult to, assuming you know how to solve ODE for given A and B, and then, uh, but in homogeneous term, the function G. So now to convert that to an integral equation, you don't need to care about this function, just up, keep that arbitrary. Um, what you get is not a solution. We will just convert that to another kind of equation. Just get an integral equation out of our uh, differential equation. So uh, what you did is just take an integral of the equation. So this is uh, y double prime. You integrate the y double prime a up to x and dx. Right? If you do, if you do that. I mean, suppose that this x would be a new variable, not this x. But you do that, uh, that will give you y prime at x minus y prime at a, which is y zero. Okay. So that is, uh, if you do that for the first term, you get this one. Okay. So then you do it again for the, this term, for all the different terms. Okay, so let's just write it uh, turn by turn, adding everything. So, so this is this term. Then you can change that to this is y zero prime, which is a constant. Although you have a prime here, it's just just an indication of another constant. Okay, so so that is this one, and then. You have uh, this term, you have a to x, a, whatever. You need another variable like x. I don't know what uh, your textbook means. Uh, is T or something. I actually don't like it. I mean, this, this is x is like a spatial value. You change it to T like a time, or maybe you can use x prime, right? And then you have y prime, which is again x prime, and then dx prime. So that's the second term, right? And then the third term, a dx, x, and then dx prime, y. And this is also in x prime, like uh, this is a function x prime, this is a function x prime, x prime. And the right hand side would be just exactly the same, a to x prime, and then g x prime, uh, a to x, g x prime. Okay, so that's uh, straightforward. It's just a straightforward integration. Nothing is very special. Okay. Now you do it one more time. Oh, but before we do it one more time, this, this term, this, uh, you can do an integration by part of, of this one, because now y prime is inside the integral. We want y inside the integral. Well, I mean, uh, not uh, y prime and y. I mean, in general, you can write the integral equation with the derivative of your know, unknown function in, inside the integral also, but uh, if you want, you can convert that into just the, the function inside the integral by doing integration by part so that just a another way to write it. Okay, so you do integration by part of this first, so that that becomes uh, just this part. This part becomes a x y prime, but x prime evaluate a and x. Okay. And then minus 
Um, a to x. And this becomes y x prime and then a prime of x prime. So that's this, that's just this term. Okay. And the other terms are fine. Okay. Now you do it one more time, one more integral, because you have uh, x prime, still have an x prime here. So you do it one more time, also integrate from a to x. So the first term will give you y x minus the initial conditions of y at a, which is y zero, and then minus. Now this one is integrate from a to x. This is just a constant. So it's y zero prime times x minus a. Okay, so this one is just a constant. But that doesn't matter. And now the this term, the, the upper limit is a function of x, so you need to integrate that. So my, this is plus integrate a to x, a x prime, y x prime. So that's the upper limit and you see x prime, integrate that from a to x. Now the, sec, the lower limit is this uh, y at a, which is y zero, and then you multiply by a at a, but it's a constant, so you just, this is a lower limit of minus a at a, y zero, multiplied by x minus a. So that's the, that's the lower limit. Okay. And now the, this term is, uh, we need to integrate from a to x. And the integrate a to, now this a to x to integrate another time a to x. So you need to change it a x also. Like you change it to a to x prime, that become y x double prime a prime. Okay, just integrate that one more time. Okay. And the same thing is here for for this one. So you have minus uh, you have b e and then times y. So the functional form of this one and that one is very simple, uh, similar. So I mean presumably you can actually combine these two first. Okay, this is b times y, this is a prime times y. And this is positive, this is negative. Well, you make this combine them. Yeah. Yeah. B, X, double prime, minus A prime. So this is combining this one and that one, you get this one, okay. And then the right hand side is again uh, a to x a to x prime. Okay. Now this is in the form of uh, a an integral equation because you get rid of all the differential differential operator here. So you have y outside. So you have a the second kind, because y is also outside, and then uh, uh, you have this this one. Y is inside the integral, and you have y inside this double integral. Okay, and then you have g also inside this double integral. Okay, and you have these constant term. And you have the constant terms times x. Okay, so you have the, another the inhomogeneous number, inhomogeneous function because this is outside. It's not, it's not y. These these are just constant. Y zero is a constant. Y zero prime is a constant. Okay, so that is uh, almost the the final form. But uh, there's one more trick you can do. 
because uh, you can get rid of this double integral by uh, going to change it to a single integral. And so this trick is uh, very, sim very simple. So you, you might have done that before because uh, you look at this limit. So you have uh, integral from, um, you have two integral, I have to miss, uh, miss it. I actually miss a, uh, there's a, a, there should be a dx prime also. Like here, there's a dx prime. Okay. All right, so because this is coming, both of these are coming from this term and that term, so origin is dx prime and integrate from a to x. Now you integrate another, uh, now integrate over this x. So after you integrate this x, you change that x to x prime. And that is the integration variable. And you integrate from a to x, so you have another dx prime here. OK, so you, you have x prime and x double prime, right? So in this double, double integral, the x prime is integrated from C a to a to x, so assuming this is a, and this is also a, so this is, this, this is not the origin, this is a and a, okay? So you integrate x prime from a to a value of x, x which is a fixed number, but this integral, this is, this is x, okay? But then uh, you, you integrate x double prime, from uh, from x to x, uh, let's just say uh, this is a, a to x prime. So for, for x prime, a to x for x double prime, you integrate from a to x prime, not a to x. So in that case. Uh, so you have uh, x double prime integrate from a to x, x prime. So like uh, this is x prime. So basically this line is x prime equal to x double prime, right? So this integral is from, so a, x prime is a to x, right? x prime is a to, a prime, uh, x prime, right? And so this is integrate from A to this point where x double prime is equals x prime, okay? So this, area, this is the area integral over here, okay? Now the idea is to change that, to change that, uh, you actually want to, uh, want to integrate uh, the integration limit that doesn't depends on your you know, variable. So this is x prime and then you integrate over x prime. You want to get, get rid of that. So, uh, so to do that, uh, x double prime is uh, actually would, would be a form this is a to x prime, a to you want to change this to uh, uh, instead of um, Going here, you, you want to go to the triangle the other way around. The other way around. So, uh, so this integral, let me write it here. So a to x dx prime. And then this is a to x prime and dx double prime. So this is going this way. You want to write it like a 
So, so for so you, you go from to this way, right? Uh, so uh, you can say that the x pi, x double pi is from, um, this is also because uh, this is to x, this is also to x. So x double pi is integral from a to x. So a to x, right? And the x prime is from x double prime to a, uh, x double prime, uh, x double prime to x. X double prime to x. Right, because it's going from here, where x prime is equal to x double prime, you integrate up to here, which is x. Okay, you want to, you want to do something like that. Okay. And now you apply it for here to here. And the integrams are all function of x double prime. If you, if you do that, change the integral to here. And the integration over x double prime now doesn't have, a, or at the x prime, doesn't involve the function inside the integram. The integram is just uh, x double prime. This is depends on x double prime. So you can take that out of this integration of going to here, go inside. So this, you can integrate it uh, separately. So that becomes a to the x. And then this is x minus x double prime. And whatever the function, whatever. You may have a function here, which is a depends on x double prime. Okay, so you basically get which of one of the integration by using this trick, just uh, reversing the integration order instead of this triangle going from this vertical line, going from this horizontal line. Okay, then you get get to just one integration, okay, all right. And so we can write that out explicitly. So the rest is just uh, basically the same. So you can write it again, y x minus y zero. And this two has a similar form, so you can combine them to minus you have uh, a, a, y zero. This is from this one, right? And then this, and then you have this one. That's y zero prime, and both minus, uh, multiplied by x minus a, okay? And then this one has uh, a to x, a x prime y a x prime. Okay. And this one, now you do use this trick. But after you do this trick, uh, you want you can simplify that x double prime, change that back to x prime. So you have a to x to x prime. And what you have is uh, multiplied by x minus x prime, the rest would be y x prime, b x prime minus a prime x prime. So that is this one, okay? And likewise, the right hand side is a to x, and then multiply by x minus x prime, and then g, Okay, so uh, everything, yeah. All right. So this is the final form. Although you can rearrange that to make it nicer, or combining this two, you have an x here, you have an x here. You can actually combine these two also, because both are integrating from a to x. All right, and both are proportional to the y, so you can combine these two terms, and. 
this is a, in the form of a uh, integral equation that involves x in the limit. So this is a Volterra. And the second kind, because y is up here outside and inside the integral. Okay, so, uh, so that should be your final form, although I might not, uh, will not be written out exactly the form. I mean, you can combine these two and write the kernel. So the kernel will, uh, will the K, you know, situation is uh, this, this times that, and then uh, combine with this, this one, then right? combine with this one. That would be a, your kernel function. Okay. I think that this uh, I think that is right. So this is, I mean, it's not exactly the same form. You move this to the right, move all of that to the right hand side. Um, that uh, you should get the, the form that in your textbook. But anyway, this is just the process of getting the integral equation. You can write down the kernel form like that in terms of A and B or the derivative. But usually when you do something like that, you, you don't want it just substitute in your formula because um, the form you might get the formula wrong. And so for a particular solution A and B and G, you usually just want to do, go through the process, just do the integral and do an integration by part all of that for particular choice of A and B and, and G, because some of these functions might be easier to integrate. It's just integrate it out instead of keeping them or do a derivative A prime, doing it out instead of uh, keeping it as, as a general formula. Then you convert that into a integral equation. Okay, so, uh, so as you can see, the, the form of the integral equation is uh, kind of complicated, although you can simplify it by writing a kernel, but the kernel is complicated also. So whether it's uh, useful to do that is uh, depends on the situation. Um, sometimes it is and sometimes it is not. Okay, uh, so. Uh, without going to too much details, just example, which is kind of a silly example because uh, the differential equation is simple. So you might actually solve the differential equation directly instead of writing as it as an integral equation. But this is just, uh, just an example. So the first example is a uh, simple harmonic oxidator, y double prime plus omega square y equals zero. It's homogeneous solution, homogeneous equation. And then uh, this is in the form of initial conditions here, y zero, it's zero, y prime zero, that's one, okay. And of course you can substitute, you can identify what A and B and G in that situation, now G is zero. And uh, if A is zero, you can only have B and so on. You can sub substitute it into this formula or you can do just a simple uh, integration and you get the, the integral equation this way. So Y, X, just uh, following the procedure, you get something like this. And this is uh, already built in the initial condition. Zero to X. And B minus x, and then this is using t as a variable. Anyway, uh, you can you can see that uh, it satisfies the defense, uh, the initial condition quite straightforward because if you substitute x equals a x equals zero, that would be zero. This is zero, so y is zero, and likewise y prime. Just take the derivative y. Take the derivative, this is one, right? And when you take the derivative, uh, that is uh, when X changes to 
a T chains to X, so this will kill the, the integral will kill it. And this derivative uh, will, will give you this uh, Y integral, but it's keep, keep the limit zero to X. So you set X to zero, so that is zero also. So you, so you check that it satisfies both of this uh, initial condition. And to, set, to see that it's actually equivalent to that is just to repeat the uh, derivative. You can see that right away. Okay, so that is uh, uh, just converting that to uh, this differential equation to integral equation. And you can see that that for this particular case is actually doesn't, it's just make, make life difficult because this is, you know how to solve it. This is just a, a sinusoidal solution. So either sine or cosine. And the solution of this one is kind of looks uh, horrible. If, if, you, if you have a question just ask you to solve this equation, you probably don't know, don't recognize how you solve it, right? Uh, and so the, the hint in here is that if you have an exam that uh, give you an integration equation to solve, so don't panic, okay? So look, it, although it looks horrible, it's actually just coming from a simple differential equation. So that also suggests one way to solve an integral equation is just converting it back to a differential equation. So although that's not always possible, but this in this case is uh, uh, the easiest one because uh, once it's given by this integral e equation, what you can do is keep taking the derivative of this. You can take y prime here and then take y double prime. And you, you see that after you take the derivative and you combine y and y double prime, you see that the integral terms should cancel and you combine it this way, you set it to zero. So you see that this actually satisfy a differential equation which you recognize how to, how to solve. And then you can solve it this way. Okay, so um, although this is not the general case because not all integral equation can be converted back to differential equation, but uh, in many cases, in especially in exams, so, one way to check whether you can solve it easily is to try to convert it back to differential equation. Okay, so that is um, one way to think about it. I uh, to finish up this uh, uh, again using this differential equation just to show that it actually would give you different kinds of uh, integral equation is. Uh, Instead of using this as your initial condition, if you set the condition as y zero is zero, and like y at another location, y b, which is greater than zero, it's also zero. So if y is zero at both n, so if you have x zero to b, the so y must be zero here and here, so whatever y is, we satisfy this. Hmm. Boundary conditions so why like a this is called a two point boundary condition, and this is obviously quite common. It's like a string you, you pin it at both ends, and the this string will vibrate. And then, although the solution is still sine and cosine, but it keeps the this two point fixed, right? And we know how to solve this. We know how to solve it by a Fourier series. So we, we, than that many times. But another way to solve it is uh, using the integral formula. And if you convert that to an integral equation, which uh, is straightforward, I don't want to waste the time to hear, but just to write down the final form, because I think we did that before in the green function chapter. So you actually know how to do that. Okay, so the uh, finally, the form is uh, integral equation is equals omega square integrate from zero to zero to b the kernel y dt and the kernel in this case is uh, given by this. T over B 
P minus X for P less than X X over B B minus T T greater than X. Okay. And you see that this kernel will actually is like a, a green function. Uh, if you get this kernel by green function, you know that uh, the kernel also satisfies the boundary condition like t less than x it would include t equals zero. t equals zero must be zero, so you have a zero here. And for this case, for the upper limit, when t equals to b, t greater than x, so t can be can take b. But then when uh, y b is zero, so the kernel also is zero at t, yeah, so t equals b is zero. In, in fact, we construct this green function by uh, using homogeneous solution. In that case, a homogeneous solution is just y double prime equals zero, the homogeneous equation, and y double prime is zero. The solution is linear function. So you have two linear function. You use two linear function to construct the uh, Green function, which is a product of the two linear function, say y1 and y2. And the combination need to be con uh, continuous at x equals to t. And that is continuous uh, in the derivative. So we, that's how we construct the green function. If you still remember the green function chapter. So, so this is the form of a, if you do it, do that, do it that way, it's form an integral equation. Now y appear inside the integram and outside the integram. And uh, so this is sec second kind and X doesn't appear in the limit. So it's, it's the fret home kind, fret home and second kind. And it's homogeneous because there's no source term. So all term proportion to the Y. So the solution of Y you can multiply by a constant. And so this is, this becomes an eigenvalue problem actually because omega, this solution will only be satisfied if omega squared takes certain discrete value. And we all know that how, how those discrete value because uh, this is zero to B and the fix at both points, you know how to solve it. You get sign, a series of sign, right? And they satisfy the, some, you know, some, discrete values, so omega square must take some discrete value so that uh, both y will be zero at both c and b. Okay, this is just another way to, to look at that. So in that case, the kernel is simple. Again, uh, the integral equation looks, looks uh, uh, difficult to solve, but uh, you can actually see that it's coming from a very simple differential equation and the differential equation, you know how to solve it also. So um, but that is not, uh, although you, uh, to convert this back to here, you might, you might actually uh, also take some work because now the variable doesn't appear in the limit. So when you take the derivative of that, you only take the derivative over the kernel rather than the limit, right? But in this case, uh, the kernel actually is simple, right? So uh, the kernel only depends on x one time. So you take the, take the, that's the derivative, you only get the derivative over x. So take a derivative over one time, you get, you get, uh, you get a constant, right? You get a constant out. And do the second time you actually uh, peel the peel the, uh, the the kernel also. Okay, so uh, so but uh, I mean converting from integral equation back to differential equation might not be that easy, but uh, from differential equation to integral equation is uh, a little bit easier. But there are other ways to solve the integral equation. Uh, some of them are semi-general. They, if the kernel satisfies a certain form, then you can follow a certain method to solve it. Um, but this is uh, not exactly general because uh, if the kernel doesn't satisfy the form, then you might need to find another way. 
So this is sim similar to differential equations. It, when you have a differential equation, you look at the pattern of the differential equations, see if satisfies certain kind of differential equation that you know how to solve it by one method or, or the other. So likewise in integral equation, we also um, just, uh, found, look for pattern, right? Look like the, look the, for the kernel, what, what does it satisfy? And see if you can use some of these methods. So the, so next time we'll, we'll go through a few of these uh, method. Um, and the next, um, the, the section after that is a series, series solution. It's a series solution that is not exactly the same as the series solution for a differential equation. It's kind of like an iteration method. This is also the, the Neumann series. And it may or may not be uh, actually easier to solve than other methods, but uh, at least that's uh, one way to do it. And then uh, chapter section four is another kinds of uh, another kinds of general method, just like uh, using the you know, basis function, solve it by using basis function. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, those uh, will we'll, Go through it, hopefully get it done uh, by Friday. Okay, any question up to here? All right, that's just uh, for you to know. All right, then uh, we'll continue on Wednesday.